We used to do that. Um, no, we didn't. Had 3,000 visitors, it wasn't bad. But the aim is this year to double it. And obviously to use social media and digital marketing techniques. So I was delighted uh, when Paul and Dean uh, agreed to come along, because this is their business. They've been doing it for an unbelievable 12 years. Didn't think there was any digital marketing 12 years ago. In a fashion, yeah. So that's been going a long time. Yeah. So fantastic that they can come along. This this going to sort of look at what we're doing uh, and see how they can adapt the sort of digital marketing strategies they use to the work that we're doing. Thank you, guys. Yes. Hi, guys. I'm Dean. Um, so yeah, eStrategy. We've been going for quite a number of years now. The business has kind of changed, especially very recently as well, because of the way Google handles things like search engine positioning and all that kind of stuff. So before Christmas, we were very heavily into search engine marketing and how, where you position in Google and all that kind of stuff. And that's just changed now. Google has changed the way that it positions your content. So when you're looking at things like social media, looking at things like your website, Google determines how relevant your content is to your audience in, in a very different way than it used to. So we've kind of had to change our business to that effect as well. So I'm going to talk to you, um, I'm going to give you a presentation that we usually give to our corporate clients so you can see what we do on kind of an industry level. And then we'll take little bits that are relevant to what you're doing and you can ask me some questions at the end that are obviously very relevant to what, to what you guys are doing. So content marketing and social media, the best thing to do is to always have a plan. Don't just do it. Um, and I'll show you a reason why. Because if you do it, uh, you are doing what we call scattergun. Now that is just any content, anywhere, anywhere over the net in order to try and get some kind of result from it. So you should stop. Come on, brain this time. <laughs> Hammer time. <laughs> or in the name of love. Anyway, anyway you do, just stop, okay? Because you need a plan, you need a reason to publish, you need a strategy, an e-strategy. Uh, that is a shameless brand drop. So. What you need to do is stop just throwing stuff everywhere and be a curator, okay? There are uh, great museums all over the world and you don't make a great museum just by putting everything into one room, okay? Because that is a warehouse. Nobody wants to visit a warehouse, people want to go to really great museums. So what you need to do is look at quality, not to quantity. So you need an audience. You can send 100,000 people to your blog, to your website, to your social media channels. If they're not interested in what you've got to say, it's a waste of your efforts and a waste of your time. So if you had 100 people, but they were really engaged with everything you're saying and they really want to know about what you're doing, you're going to get much better results than having 100,000. Okay, so to do that, your content, your social media content, your writing, your blogs, everything has to be useful, it has to be interesting, audience friendly, sticky, and when I, when I say sticky, I mean that people have got to want to stay and read it, you know, if you've got a blog post, you don't want them to just read the headline, you want them to kind of go in, look at your pictures, look at the rest of the content, and then do something based on the back of that. And it's got to have the cookie factor. Now, the cookie factor is like being rewarded. So if this reader is looking at your blog post, are they getting little chunks of, of stuff all the way through that blog post to make them feel like they're, you know, eating through a cookie? So anyway, we can uh, really describe it. So good content builds an audience quicker than anything else. You can do lots of stuff. You can throw lots of money at this kind of stuff. You can do big, massive campaigns. Um, but if you have really engaging stories, people will share them, and that's how you build a really great audience. So you're looking to maximize kind of the impact of what you guys are doing. So if it's really engaging and people are really interested in it, they'll want to tell their friends, and their friends will want to tell their friends. So that's how you build a really good audience. It doesn't just kind of happen by mistake. Um, optimizing content, this kind of works on a larger scale for people in, in industry that if you're putting all this content out, you still need to factor into things like Google. So you really have to make sure that Google's going to know what your content is and, and know where to put it and know where to place it. So what should you actually do? So content is inbound. Now, this whole content process includes social because social media is one of your main kind of like bits of content. There's a lot you can do otherwise, but we'll focus mainly on your social media. So this, the Content Marketing Institute, the big guys that tell everybody in our industry how to do it and what to do it, they collect lots of research and figure out what works best. They've created this lovely little infographic. Um, so you plan, you pick your audience, you choose your story, then you look at your channels, the process, conversations and the measurements. So I'm going to walk you through those because that's quite a difficult diagram to wrap your brains around. So the plan, you need to think about what you're doing, what you want to achieve, 
And obviously the business case is much more for an industry level where you're looking at figures and finance and you have to go to a boss and say, I need X amount of cash in order to do something. He's going to say, well, what do I get back for that? What's, you know, what's my return on that? So for you guys, it's kind of what are you looking to achieve? You know, you're doing this project and you want to share it with people. What's the point? And if you start off with that number one fact and you know that, you know what the point of what you're doing is, it makes the rest of the journey so much easier. So you use an inbound strategy. And an inbound strategy, I won't cover this in too much detail because it's quite convoluted, but it means that the content works for you. You don't write this bit of blog and then have to go and, and keep pushing it somewhere, posting it on Facebook, posting it on Twitter, Instagram, all these different places all the time. It means that you should have a really nice, little, lovely little bit of content that once you share, kind of just rides on the back of the wave of all your friends sharing it, their friends sharing it, your parents sharing it, the school sharing it, the event sharing it, and then that works for you because that brings people back to your blog and will get people to read your blog. So everything that you're doing should be working on your behalf to make your life easier, not the other way around. Okay? Because you can spend a lot of time doing stuff and get very bogged down in social media without actually achieving anything. So your audience, you know what the point of what you're doing is, so who are you going to tell about it? You know, who, who are the people that are really interested in what you've got to offer? And if you don't know that, then again, you're, you're just going out to everybody. And not everybody, as, you know, as, as horrible as it is, not everybody's going to be interested in what you have to say. But that's, that's just the way it is. So what you need to do is to focus on the people that really are interested. You need to find where they are. Um, so when I say about engaging people, I don't obviously mean that way. It's got a lot of people into a lot of trouble over the past. So you need to do it in another way. Um, how to find your audience. Now, um, we build buyer personas. And what that means is, so say uh, you want someone to come to your event. Who is that person? Ideally, if you could choose somebody to walk up to your stand at your event, who would they be? Would they be male? Would they be female? Would they be 20? Would they be 40? Would they be 60? Um, you know, would they be in this kind of industry, that kind of industry? And it may seem very general, but if you can really picture that person that, that you're trying to attack with your content marketing or with social media, and you can write it all down and visualize it, you can make lots of other decisions based on that, so that when you're trying to advertise your event, you know where else these people hang out. So it might be that through your persona, you figure out that, say, sample Sally here, she reads another blog based on something else kind of related to your industry, or she likes a bit of fashion. So you can start looking at those avenues in order to publish your content in relevant places there, because you know she's going to be interested in what you have to offer at your blog. So you're looking at extending the reach of your kind of, you know, your event and your audience is quite narrow. So you go outside of the box and look for other places in where, you know, your kind of key audiences are going to be. So identify your buying cycles, not buy cycles. This is something completely different. Don't get them confused because it won't help. Um, and a buying cycle is something like this. Now, because you guys have not necessarily a product, this is, this is on a kind of a different level. You know, you're just looking to raise kind of awareness. But if you know what stage of awareness these people are at, you know kind of what content they're going to be interested in. And I'll give you some examples. Um, this here, which is a larger content map, we're talking about the personas. So say you have four or five different people that want to come to your event, and you know that at each stage of the buying cycle, they're going to need different content. This is how you can fill up your whole world full of content marketing. When you think about one blog post, you might write a blog post for Sample Sally here, and it might have something to do with content she's interested in there, but you can use that same content and do what we call repurposing, which means you take it and you change it. So you don't have to have 500 million different ideas of content in order to get a wider audience. You basically take the same bit and you change it slightly, and you advertise it somewhere else, and it becomes relevant to a whole new person. So, buying cycles. So we're talking about raising awareness. So if you were looking at buying a washing machine, for example, right, which I'm guessing you guys don't because your parents probably should do that. If you're buying washing machines, I'd raise some questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so you look at information at different stages. So I'll use it as an example. So if you're just looking for information, you might want to know how washing machines work. So you might look at some blog posts about how a washing machine works. But further on down the line, when your parents are putting their hands in their pockets and putting their credit card on the line, they're going to want to know some technical information. You know, I'm really quite serious about buying this now. So they'll maybe look at an e-book, which has, you know, the, this is the economical rating of this washing machine, and it does this, that, that, and that. But you're not interested in that type of content until much, much further down the line. 
So at every stage of you know the awareness stage, research stage, comparison stage, and buying stage, you need to make sure you're providing different information in different ways in order to attract a different person. But I've talked a lot about that, and it's very confusing, and I'm throwing it at you because this is a presentation that should take much longer for kind of a corporate environment, right? So go on the internet. The internet, if you look at things like content grids, tells you what you need to be showing to people at certain stages. So if you look at somebody who is looking at awareness, they might be bored at work, so they're going to look at things like ebooks, they're going to look at infographics, they're going to look at viral videos. You know, but if you're looking at somebody who's about to make a purchase and is actually interested in spending some money, then they want to they do things like reference checklists, you know, have they ticked every box, they're going to be looking at pricing guides. So things like this, if you do a very, very simple search on Google or any other kind of browser um, or search engine, you're going to find stuff like this, which really helps you plan your content out. So research, there are other, other places to do research. So things like Keyword Planner, Google Analytics, I'm not sure if you guys have ever used any of those kind of tools before, but if you're thinking, well, how am I going to know what people are going to want to read about? You know, how do I know? We know we're doing this event and we know it's about this, but what are people searching the internet for so that you can kind of make your content relevant? Um, so there are some other tools, Google Suggest and Uber Suggest. Um, this is quite in depth, so I'm going to skip over this now because um, I could probably be here all afternoon talking about that. Um, so once you know about your content and you know what you've got, you've got this, you know, you want to do 20 Twitter posts, you want to do 17 Facebook posts, you want to write three blogs, you want to do a video, you want to do all this, you think, oh my god, how do I manage this? Well, you just pop it into a calendar. Um, we use, and I use, Google Calendar because I can share that with people. So I can look at other people, either clients or people in the team. And I can share that one calendar with everybody and we can put all our events into that one place and order them so that A, we're not doing 17 Facebook posts all in one day because they're going to be out the door and gone and that's your whole traffic on Facebook just done in an instant. So you make sure you spread out your content